Swang guys, this is Swaggy Turbo and welcome back to part 7 of Scuderia Supari, my team career board. So if you haven't seen part 6 yet, we had a huge issue with our engine. So the first thing that I wanted to do for this particular episode was change my engine, make sure our energy store is a new one and not a faulty one. If you don't have the context, go and check out part 6 in Austria. But yeah, right now we are here for the Belgium Grand Prix. We only have 500 resource points though, so can't really get any new upgrades on the car, as of now at least. So we're gonna try and, you know, just get a bit more of weekly resources and... Maybe then, before the season break, we can put something on upgrade. And while I'm talking about upgrades, we have a failure. So, we did put this on Rushed, and it is clearly not worked out. So, yeah, we have to put it again, and it's only gonna, uh, you know, get on the car after Spain. So, at least we'll have a pretty decent major upgrade for the chassis uh, for Monza. But, unfortunately, in Spa... We don't really have an upgrade, so it's gonna be hard. We do get, you know, a few minor upgrades in, but not a major upgrade, which is kind of sad. But we'll do our best to, you know, try and get into points. We have a car which can deliver now. It has pretty decent stats, at least, you know, of late now. You can see it on screen. We are fifth fastest and we have a chance of actually getting points now so if we don't have any bad luck like austria or even britain for that matter or even spain the last three rounds have just been awful so if we don't have that i think we should be good to go focusing on the quality lap right now we have a pretty decent car so i was expecting to at least you know be up there in like maybe 12th or whatever because our quality pace is pretty bad and i am trying a zero zero wing out yet again over here so i did try this in the previous league race or you know irc and it did kind of work out so i tried to go for it yet again zero zero wings at least will help me you know on the camel straight and the back straight over here the final sector so i'm just banking on that uh, and just hope like crazy that you know no one overtakes me in second sector because it's super super hard to overtake uh, you know, through pool one and you know, basically second sector. So coming to the end of the lap, we only, literally just only get P18. So pretty awful lap. Uh, no idea what happened there because the car did feel okay. Zero zero wings. I tried my best, made a few mistakes here and there, but we are around two tenths or yeah, around two tenths down from our teammate Jehan. So, still a lot of things to do. Let's see if we can catch back up in the race, use the 0 wings and get a good result. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Carlos Sainz, and Norris, Hamilton, Gasly, Ocon and Daniel Ricciardo, Fernando Alonso, Magnussen, Sebastian Vettel and Sonoda, Liam Lawson, Mick Schumacher, Kumar and Alex Albon, Joe, Stroll, Latifi and Jehan Daruvala. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Yeah, we have a pretty basic standard, you know, one stopper for uh, Belgium as well. But yeah, it's fire red lights for the Belgian Grand Prix and it is lights out and away we go. We actually get a pretty decent start, somewhat similar to what we had in Austria. And we can actually challenge these guys in front and we send one down the inside of, I think that is Alonso. And we're going side by side, three wide through turn one. And slowly, you know, we're getting back to are decent starts we normally have very good starts in uh league races and we're going almost touching schumacher over there the car you know our tires would have touched there but thankfully schumacher just slows down just a tad bit i don't squeeze him at all because going up or rouge and radion is just 
very bad if you're going side by side. But yeah, going through here, going side by side with Sunoda, and hopefully we can make a move down the inside over here, and we do. Sunoda actually doesn't get the traction over there, and we have overtaken Sunoda. So one position already, and there is a huge crash. There's a huge crash, and Kevin Magnussen is out of the race. We have a VSC, and this is exactly what happened to him. So we have a aerial shot, and oh my god, he has lost his front wing. Let's just quickly rewind this and check what exactly happened. So he's breaking over here, and just has too much speed. Collects the front wing of, I think that is Ocon. But, wow, that was a crazy crash and it turns into a safety car, it turns into a full course safety car and not just a VSC. So, obviously we can't really go for a pit stop right now, but that was a crazy, crazy, you know, event that took place. But yeah, end of lap 3 now, going into lap 4, the safety car is in and it's, you know, green lights and we are away with uh, racing. So, right behind Alonso gonna try and use the zero zero wings that we have to our advantage and overtake him on the camel straight if we can that's you know a major if but yeah that's going to be the plan we're gonna try and overtake him in the camel straight with the help of ERS but for some reason I couldn't really get close to Alonso and even with me dumping all my ERS over here I stopped in between just to check uh, what's going on and Sunoda was able to catch up and like basically just stick with us. No idea how I didn't get a warning over there. But yeah, it's like, it is just super weird because I was like, okay, we have zero zero wings, we have an advantage, but it didn't really show on track, which is, again, just like confusing. But yeah, end of lap seven now, we could keep Sunoda behind. And I guess, you know, the AI right after the safety car, uh, went in, which is, you know, dumping ERS or whatever. But we are right behind Alonso and Vettel and we go for a send down the inside and it almost hit Vettel there and it really, you know, just turned into a double overtake. I didn't really expect to overtake a Vettel there. I was just, you know, uh, sending it down the inside of Alonso because they were fighting already and they were pretty slow. And right here, Alonso gives us a bit of space. So I was like, you know what? I respect that. I'll give you the space as well. Give him enough space and more. And we are, you know, just in P9 now. Thankfully, zero zero Wings is working and I make a small mistake going wide over, uh, you know, the turn one curb and I just let Vettel through here because I was like, you know what, we'll let Vettel through, get DRS and overtake him yet again and Alonso, <laughs> the wisely old fox, wants to overtake me. So I dump, start dumping my ERS and with the help of DRS, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a pretty easy move on Vettel. Vettel does not... Oh, he does. He actually does try to defend, but we have the overspeed on him. And yet again, from the bus stop chicken, uh, you know, entry and, you know, the overtake, I like, I'm going to give him as much space as possible because not all the AI, you know, give that much space to you. And again, it's like, it's a pretty clean move going side by side, just had overpace on him, obviously because of, you know, DRS as well as zero zero wings. And right now we just have to try and survive through, you know, sector two and fly away from the next lap. So right now, five seconds in front. I don't think we can catch up to Ricardo over there, but again, we're gonna try our best at least we are in points. So end of lap 10 now, and I had to go into the pits. The tires were just completely short. You could see that, you know, I was going wide. And that's why I just, you know, decided, okay, let's quickly get into the pits, get a new set of hards, and hopefully we can, you know, go to the end without any tire issues because we have invested quite a bit with the R&D on tire wear as well. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't really, you know, the tires stay till the end. But yeah, Alonso also pitting with us and we get a pretty decent stop, 2.5 second pit stop and I think it was slightly better than Alonso because we did get over a second uh, lead coming out of the pits, which is pretty good. And now all you gotta do is try and keep him at bay, just, you know, not let him come in the one second window, the DRS window, and I think we should be fine. We are skipping all the way to lap 21. We had a pretty, you know, a few fights here and there. But it's like, it was nothing very really major. It was just like, you know, Alonso trying to catch up. And then Camel Straight, I was just pulling a gap of around 3-4 tenths. You can literally see it right here. We have caught up to Ricardo. 
I didn't expect this to happen, but yeah, we have caught up to Daniel in front. So we have a chance to get close to Ricardo and maybe even overtake him in the final lap with the help of DRS because it was so, so hard to get to, you know, over here, get to this place. And only 27% ERS because I have been using quite a lot of ERS just to get close to Daniel over here. Alonso, 1.6 second uh, behind. He didn't really, you know, let me fly away in the distance. But yeah, Sonoda, 10 seconds away. We had pretty decent pace with, you know, the 0-0 wings. And these guys were pretty on pace as well. It's like they were setting somewhat similar times to what I was setting. And you can just see here that Alonso has got us up. So the lead that we have, or you know, the pace advantage that we have is completely gone. And the final lap, we might have to think about defense and not just attack. But essentially, we have DRS over here and Alonso does not. So we have a chance, even now, in the final lap of the Belgian Grand Prix, to overtake Ricardo. Who would have thought? I was literally like, five seconds, there's no way to catch him up. And towards the end, the hearts were, you know, I was able to just drive this car perfectly with, even with the 0 wings, even though the tire wear is slightly higher, the upgrades on the car are helping quite a bit and yeah just eight tens between us and ricardo i'm dumping all the rs using the you know uh ers as well as the drs obviously and it's still not enough I, only eight person left now and unless i don't get a amazing out of the world second sector i don't think we'll be able to get ricardo maybe in a lap or two we might have you know had a chance but yeah the final lap all these AI have, you know, stored ERS as well. We are super, super low on ERS and it's just looking pretty hard to get that P8 right now. But as I was saying earlier, Alonso has caught up. It's only six tens between me to Ricardo and me to Alonso as well. So we could literally, you know, just switch. We have to switch instantly from attack mode to defend because it's only three tenths between me and Alonso. I am losing quite a bit of time through second sector. I knew that already. So I did save around 20% ERS for this straight. And Alonso with his ERS down is literally only two tenths behind us. So it's gonna get down to the wire. We have to just make sure we don't really crash into Ricardo and get this car home after the stretch it is two uh, not even two, it's like 22 minutes or actually 22 laps of spa. My brains shut down and we could come ninth. Finally, getting back to points. And I can't tell you how hard it was to even come here. We even get the driver of the day. Honestly, well deserved because all the way from the back, we could, you know, get at least ninth. And yeah, super happy with points right now because I didn't really expect this car, uh, you know, to to qualify basically you know we qualify at 16th didn't really expect to qualify there but yeah thankfully we are able to get a few points for scooter supari and hopefully you know we can get into podium soon it's like it's a stretch obviously but yeah it's like let's just be optimistic try and get as many points as we can for our team and i think I'm pretty sure that Ferrari has uh, won the constructors at this point because the gap isn't like much between Mercedes and Ferrari. But Ferrari, towards this uh, you know second half of the season, their development has been very good. The car development has been on point. Red Bull is trying, but yeah, it's like the gap between them and the top two, which is Ferrari and the broad Mercedes, is not that much. So Alfa Romeo's collab with Ferrari has been pretty successful till now. But yeah, we'll just have to see if broad Mercedes can do anything in the last three races of the season. But yeah, right now, Leclerc just having the time of his life on that podium. Leclerc first, Verstappen second, Perez third, and Lando doing pretty well for that Vodafone McLaren in fourth. Sainz fifth, uh, Hamilton sixth, and we can literally not even see 
to George Russell right now. So pretty bad, uh, you know, race for him. He obviously DNF'd, couldn't really get him on, uh, you know, this video for some reason. We couldn't really get the replay of it. But yeah, looking at the standings now, Russell has lost the top spot that he had and Leclerc has overtaken him by 10 points. So the difference, not much between Russell, Verstappen and Leclerc. But yeah, it's like Ferrari is 14 points ahead of Mercedes and Mercedes not doing that much. We are up to 7th, which is pretty decent. But yeah, that's it for Spa. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Comment down below uh, where you think we'll finish next. This is Wagadabu signing off. Peace.